UFOs have not only been observed in the air, thousands of people from almost every part of the world have reported seeing UFOs on or just above the ground. This is a photograph of a UFO landing site. Ted Phillips of Sedalia, Missouri, seen here examining a UFO affected area, is acknowledged as the world expert on the physical traces found at UFO landing sites. Mr. Phillips is a research associate of the Center for UFO Studies and has conducted specialized research on the physical traces found at UFO landing sites for the past nine years. The results of his research are files on over 1,480 UFO landings from 59 countries. Mr. Phillips has personally investigated over 500 UFO sightings and visited over 300 UFO landing sites. These are soil samples taken from five recent UFO landing sites and are fairly representative of uh, some two to three hundred UFO landing sites that I have personally been involved with. This is a small portion of the soil taken from a UFO landing site in Delphos, Kansas. The soil in the UFO landing ring is extremely dehydrated and is unable to absorb water. Instead, it simply floats. Soil taken only a few feet away that was not part of the UFO landing ring behaved normally. Within a few seconds, it absorbed the water that we poured on it. Besides being unable to absorb water, UFO affected soil cannot support seed germination and plant life. Soil taken a few feet away does support normal plant growth. Each of the pins in this map represents a UFO landing site that has been reported to Ted Phillips in the last eight years. There are over 150 UFO landing sites represented on this map. I've investigated a rather high percentage of these reports personally and have found a remarkable consistency in size and shape uh, regarding the UFO scene and the ground effects resulting from that UFO landing. We find imprints left evidently by the landing gear of the object, some of these indicating tremendous pressure, uh, great weight, generally uh, found as three or four in number, arranged in either a triangular or rectangular pattern. We have effects on witnesses, such as the witnesses suffering what appears to be a sunburn effect on their face, neck, and hands, following the close approach of a UFO. Extreme dryness of the nasal area, extreme dryness of the throat. I have talked with nearly 2,000 people who have had a UFO experience, and those people uh, certainly have convinced me that something very real is going on. Something real is indeed going on. No matter how vivid a hallucination is, it cannot dehydrate soil. 80% of the descriptions of a UFO in Ted Phillips' files are of a disc-shaped object between 10 and 35 feet in diameter. Over 400 of the landing cases in these files involve more than one witness observing a UFO for longer than one minute at a distance of less than 250 feet. We're talking about people, uh, police officers, clergymen, newsmen, business people, people in all walks of life from all parts of the country who have had real UFO experiences, and in many cases, a very close range. The interesting thing is that these people could witness a murder, could go into court, testify to that effect, put a, a man away for life, and yet, those same people have a UFO experience and their testimony is no longer valid. That's certainly a very strange uh, set of double standards that we have in this country. It's difficult to understand. Another UFO investigator whose research has convinced him that UFOs are real is Colonel Wendell Stevens. I need proof for myself, and I look for proof in everything that happened. The, a number of things happened in, the, in Alaska that add a lot, a lot 
to my belief patterns. But then when I got to investigating my own cases and could look people in the eye, and I, and I investigated some cases that were profound cases, then I became convinced that there's something here. And the something that's here, at least a part of the something that's here, is physical, it's tangible, it's just like the car sitting out there in the street, you can go up and thump it. The evidence is overwhelming that indeed something is here, and it is physical, and it is extraterrestrial. In the course of lecturing all over the continent, I have talked now to more than 90 former military people who have told me of excellent sightings that occurred while they were in the service and where the data didn't go to the old Project Blue Book, which we were told was the only government group concerned with UFOs, but instead typically went to the Aerospace Defense Command or the National Security Agency and where the security lid was clamped down immediately. Now, I've heard so many of these stories that I'm either having to say that all of these people are lying or that we're dealing with the cosmic water game.